video is to do a sand example to find the effect of stress. Okay, so I've drawn it up for you here. So we have two layers. We've got we know we've got one layer and we've got a water table which is five meters below the surface. So for a sand, everything below the water table will become saturated. Right? We want to find the effect of stress at point A and point B. Okay, so let's do point A first. Now, because this region is all dry and this region is all saturated, this is gamma dry and this region is gamma sat. Okay, so we first have to find gamma dry because we're only given gamma sat. So we know that gamma sat equals G plus E outside of 1 plus E outside of gamma W. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to find E, right? If we rearrange this, we get 1 plus E gamma sat equals G plus E gamma W. Um, we can then expand this to get gamma sat plus E gamma sat equals G gamma W plus E gamma W. Let's put all the E's on this side. So we get E gamma sat minus gamma W equals G gamma W minus gamma sat. And we can finally get E equals G gamma W minus gamma sat on top of gamma sat minus gamma w. So if we plug this all in, 2.6 gamma w is known as 9.81 minus gamma sat is 19.7 over 19.7 minus 9.81. Okay, so if we work this out, 2.6 by 9.81 minus 19.7 divided by 19.7 minus 9.81 2 2.6 by 9.81 minus 19.7 divided by 19.7 minus 9.81 we get 0 0.587 Okay, and then we can find our gamma dry, which is G outside of 1 plus E outside of gamma W. So gamma dry will be 2.6 on 1 plus 0 0.587 outside of 9.81. And we get, so... 16. 7 okay so it's a good just check to make sure that our gamma dry is smaller than our gamma sat which should make sense okay so 16.07 so we have our gamma dry so now we want to find the total stress at point A okay so at point A we're two meters below and our gamma dry is 16.07, okay? So, our total stress, so at point A, our total stress will equal gamma Z, where gamma is gamma dry, so 16.07, times by Z, which is the depth, so it's two meters, so times two, we get 32.1, kPa, okay? The pore water pressure at A is zero, right? There's no water at A, so this is zero, which means that the effective stress is the total stress minus the pore water pressure, which will be 32.1 minus zero, which will be 32.1 kPa, okay? So when we're above the water table, our total stress equals our effective stress because there's no pore water pressure. Now, at B, at B, let's first find the, the uh, total stress. So the total stress is going to be a combination of gamma dry. So the first five meters, it's all dry. So gamma dry was 16.07 times by the first depth is five meters. So all of that is five meters. Plus, we're going down to eight meters. The first five meters was dry. The next three meters is saturated. So it's plus the saturated unit weight, which is 19.7. So 
so plus 19.7 by that depth, which is 3. Okay, so 5 meters to point B is dry, and 3 meters, 8 minus 5, is saturated. Okay, so 16.07 by 5 plus 19.7 by 3. So let's work this out. We get 139.5. KPA. Now the pore water pressure, so at point B, we have three meters of water. Okay, so the pore water pressure will be three times gamma of water, which is three times 9.81, which is 29.4 kilopascals, right? Which means that our effective stress will be sigma V minus the pore water pressure, which will be 139.5 minus 29.4. We get 110.1 kilopascals. Okay, so the effective stress at B is 101.1 kilopascals. So you can see now that the total stress is different from the effective stress. So the total stress at B is 139.5. The effective stress, which is just the stress of the soil, ignoring the stress of the water, is 110.1 kPa. Um, I hope that helps. In the next video, we're going to be looking at a clay example, which is actually very different. So I highly recommend you check it out. hope that helps.